YouTube is a lot like a fruit machine. So if you imagine, if you go to a pub or an arcade, go up to the fruit machine, slot in your pound, all lights up, the wheels spin round, you get on the board, you win some money, the lights cascade and all that sort of stuff. And then when you run out of money, all the lights go off and your dopamine's all of a sudden are not being fed and you're on a bit of a diner. So you stick another pound in, all lights up again and it goes through the same process. And YouTube is a lot like that as a content creator. For example, instead of putting a coin into YouTube, you create a video, you upload it, it goes public, you get all the views, the likes and the comments coming in. And that lasts for a few days and you're all happy because it's doing well. And then after a few days, it all drops off. And all of a sudden your channel goes quiet again. So the only thing for it is to make another video, stick on YouTube. And again, just like that fruit machine, you're going through the whole process all over again. That there is the second biggest Amazon, by the way. It was the biggest until they made an even bigger one down in Essex, I think. So this is where YouTube can become quite addictive because when you first start out, you're not that bothered. You're just posting up some memories of some hiking trips and then you do a few more and then all of a sudden you're like, well, where's my subscribers? Why am I not getting enough views? You do a little bit of research and then all the so-called YouTube experts tell you you need consistency and you should be posting at least one video a week, which in my niche is quite hard to do when you're juggling a full-time job, a family, stuff like that, that you can't always get out, out in the hills to make another video. And I'm not going to go out once a week because it's going to put pressure on my relationship with Nicola. It's not fair on her either. I'd be away every weekend. So it's just not feasible for me to post a video once a week. And I think, like, don't get me wrong, I admire YouTubers. They do put content once a week. If you're not going outdoors, it's quite easy if you're just doing gear reviews in the house or you're a day in the life sort of blogger. But otherwise, for somebody who's in the, the hiking, camping niche that juggles families and full-time jobs, it's so much more difficult. And I think there's a lot of YouTubers that are maybe putting pressure on themselves. They're giving themselves a part-time job. Because when you think about it, uploading the video is just one step. I mean, obviously, it can take you three, five, six, seven hours to edit one video. You've then got to think about a thumbnail and a title. And this is where all the, the clickbait's coming in. That's another story I might touch on later on. Then you've got to reply to the comments. You've got to interact with people. You know, I'm naturally would do that anyway, but for some people that doesn't come natural. And there's a whole host of other things as well. Just trying to optimize your video to do the best it can. Or you could just up your video and not bother if it gets 10 or 10,000 views. It's just one of these things. Because my ethos is, I'm on YouTube because I go out. I don't go out because I'm on YouTube. And I try and live by that. And then sometimes you just get sucked in. So it's just, for me, it's about taking a step back and just posting whenever I go out. So I could go three, four weeks without posting a video. And then I'll have a splurge where I'm out maybe two weekends in a row. And there's an extra two videos. So my mountain time has just been really limited this year. The winter was terrible. Just, I don't know why people worship winter because British winters are just absolutely crap now. It's just wind and rain with very little snow. And folk are like, yeah, bring on the winter. Like, eh, no. <laughs> and then going into spring and summer, it's just been a really poor year so far. Don't get me wrong, I still really enjoy the whole process of making a video. Even when I'm out in the hills, I don't mind chatting away to the camera, putting the camera down and doing a walk-in, walk-out shot. You know, that does not bother me. I don't feel like it detracts from my experience out in the hills. I think I could push my videos to the next level and then maybe it would start eating into my enjoyment. But I think I've got the right level. I don't film too much, but I don't film not enough that it makes the video rubbish. You're the judge of that, you can tell me your videos are boring or whatever, but for me, I've got the right balance, my videos are good enough, in my opinion, 
and it's not intruding on my experience out in the hills still get a really good time just being outdoors and uh, when I'm old and decrepit I'll look back in these videos and probably really enjoy them and they're in 4k so they'll, they'll be watchable for 10 20 years on <laughs> future proofed do you want a treat do you want a treat good girl sit catch there you go so in the grand scheme of things I'm quite a small channel still I couldn't tell you when I actually started my YouTube channel because I um, just sort of continued from an old account that I had. I had like random clips for parties and football games and that, so it didn't really correspond with the, the outdoor niche. So I kind of regret not starting a new channel and drawing a line under the old one. But uh, it is what it is, I suppose, that doesn't matter. But YouTube is really busy at the moment. Just about every man and his dog are making wild camping videos. And when it gets down to brass tacks, what am I doing different to everybody else? You set up, top of the hill, you set up camp, take on a sunset, fly the drone round and then you're back down again and like, how do you get originality from that? I've been watching Paul Messner's journey as well where he's almost done like a full circle, he went full time, then he was struggling and then now he's dissing himself for the wild camping so he can go out and enjoy it rather than feeling the pressure and I totally get that even though I'm not a full-time YouTuber I just I know where he's at I know where he's been and totally understand that um, so I suppose the point of this video is if you're a YouTuber or you're thinking of going and starting a channel or you're running an Instagram account try not get too fixated on views and followers and subscribers likes and all that sort of stuff because it does become addictive and it gets you down like I'll go onto the YouTube creator app, the studio, and I'm I'm refreshing it to see if I've got new subscribers. And then you lose two or three, and it can be quite disheartening. And uh, I'm sure a lot of YouTubers will maybe be nodding in agreement here, but it's not healthy. So <laughs> I should really delete the YouTube studio app and not bother about subs and all that. This is like one of my favourite dog walks just because I've never met anybody but today I've met three or four different people that have been caught vlogging but anyways, uh, where was I? yeah that's right I think I was going on about um, being disheartened uh, so yeah, don't check your stats several times every day it's just, it's not healthy or constructive just maybe check it once a week set time aside, maybe a Friday night or a Sunday night or something go on and check and Maybe just check all your titles and thumbnails or as you like. Because that's another thing as well is sometimes I post a video and it doesn't immediately do well. And I'm going in and I'm jiggering with the title and the thumbnail and I'm probably doing more damage than good. So yeah, just try not get too absorbed in the whole process. So I think the message of this video is if you're going to get into YouTube or you're already posting videos on YouTube, is do it for the bikes and the hikes, not the likes and the swipes. Otherwise, that's pretty much all I've got time for. Just a wee short one. I'll catch you next one. Cheers.